Zizlov Berczynski was a Polish painter, artist, and sculptor, but he was mainly famous for being a painter. Uh, he was born in 1929, February 24th, in Sanok, Poland. And uh, he grew up during, you know, World War II. And uh, there isn't much documentation on his childhood, but from the look of things, with the photos uh, going around of him playing with, like, artillery during his childhood, uh, and then looking at his paintings and artwork, he, you can probably infer that that influenced him a little bit. During his adult years, his early adult years, he uh, moved to Krakow, Poland, and studied architecture in 1955. And then he moved back to uh, Sanak, and he became a construction worker supervisor, which he didn't really like at all. Uh, he hated it a lot, and it was during this time that he started experimenting with photography and sculpting. Um, his photography usually focused uh, on either himself or somebody else, uh, just in black and white with sometimes like wires and weird things like that. You can see in his old photography and even his sculptures, uh, the odd surrealism that he went for and some of the strange choices he went with due to his lack of training in the artistic field. For the most part, uh, his artistic endeavors were a hobby at best. He didn't really have any showings or anything like that up until 1964 at a Warsaw exhibition where he did really well and all of his paintings actually sold out. And after that, he decided that he could probably start making money off of his art. And it was around this time as well where his, what he referred to as the fantastic period started which was between like 1965 to 1985. And this was his most well-known period. This was when he was doing mostly surreal landscape art. And this involved a lot of sometimes vibrant color, but sometimes more orangey red colors. Due to the dystopian nature and the post-apocalyptic feel of all of his artwork, many people would often subjugate him to being some kind of depressing figure, some sort of, you know, solitary person. And in some ways they were right. He was a modest, shy person who wouldn't even really go to his own exhibitions. But for the most part, he was a pretty fun-loving, optimistic person as well. And some of his paintings he actually felt were humorous, despite them looking sometimes scary to the onlooker, he felt that they were humorous or optimistic. It was during the fantastic period where he would often be quoted during interviews as saying he was trying to paint as though he was painting uh, a dream, or like a photographic sort of memory of a dream. And he would also often get asked what the meaning behind his paintings were and the name and things like that but he hated the idea of having a meaning behind his paintings, and he hated when people would try to find really weak meanings behind his paintings, and he himself didn't have any meaning within his work. He just felt like his art would speak for itself. Przecież facet, który robi mi nagle na filmie, w fragmencie filmu, dosłownie Hammer Studio of Horrors, jakiś cmentarz pokazuje, kruki wylatują z kołyski, którą zbudował według mojego obrazu, przecież to bez sensu, on nie widzi nawet elementu persyflażu w obrazie, który, z którego wziął ten element, Ale na zasadzie wszystkich dosłowności. Tak jak ty je czytasz, twoje obrazy, Słuch? każdy nie musi być posłuszny twojej wizji twoich obrazów, niech każdy, niech sto kwiatów jeżeli... rozkwita, niech każdy sobie widzi twoje obrazy, jak mu się to podoba. I ja nie bronię nikomu, jeżeli widzi moje obrazy tak, jak mu się podoba. Natomiast jeżeli coś takiego ma iść w płycie, czy w jakimś materiale mającym jakby nie było znaczenie no, w jakimś sensie dydaktyczne, jako interpretacja moich obrazów, to ja znajdę mimo wszystko no, jakieś inne filmy, które byłyby może nudniejsze, czy gorzej zmontowane, ale przynajmniej miałaby coś wspólnego z tym, co ja robię. He as an artist didn't really like 
anyone criticizing his work, and I think this was probably due to the fact that he was more critical of his own work than anybody else. This really showed in 1977 when he was moving to Warsaw. He actually uh, burned a lot of his paintings that he had, a lot of his old work, and there isn't any documentation on any of this work anymore, like it's all gone for good. And the reason he said that he burned everything was just because he didn't find it satisfactory or up to par for his own standards. So he just got rid of them. So at the end of his fantastic period, Bekshinsky started doing a little bit more of a different style. Uh, a lot of people didn't like this style, but nowadays these paintings are also pretty famous. What he would do with these paintings is he would focus on, uh, instead of it being a landscape or something like that, it would be some sort of monument or a sculpture. Uh, the most famous which would be what is now referred to as a Bekshinsky cross, which is basically just a T, like that. And these would just be the focus of all of his paintings now. And the color palette was different as well. It would be usually just reds and browns pretty much across the board, all of those old paintings from like the eight, mid 80s to mid 90s are pretty much all just red and brown. The last decade of Bekshinsky's life was pretty uh, depressing. Yeah, a lot of things started going wrong for him. In 98, his wife Zofia died, and then a year later during Christmas Eve, his son Tomas committed suicide and he was the one who found the body and it was pretty hard on him. He ended up having uh, a note pinned to the wall for a good while saying something along the lines of if he was found dead to just do something with his work or something along those lines. And uh, up until his death in 2005, his art was not as popular at all. He fell into obscurity as he started focusing more on digital art with the computer age starting to come into fruition. Um, and when he did die, it wasn't a happy death at all. He ended up getting killed by a teenager who he refused to give him money. Uh, Bekshinsky got asked by him to lend him what would be the equivalent of about a hundred American dollars. And he said no. So he got stabbed to death and died February 21st, 2005.